Here's your wrestling news for November 4th, 2020. And your headlines for today include, two WWE superstars fell out of favor with Vince McMahon in rapid fashion. WWE working on something different for Royal Rumble event. WWE setting up future title matches for after Survivor Series. Taz takes dig at Triple H during AEW Dark. Riddle approaches Vince McMahon about heat in WWE locker room. WWE considers Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss as a Joker and Harley Quinn act. Kylie Ray wasn't upset when fans harassed her over getting in shape while in AEW. Kofi Kingston wasn't thrilled with Fox bringing up his past. Braun Strowman wants Drew McIntyre in Team Raw at WWE Survivor Series. Jim Ross takes shots at WWE in a big way and more. We're kicking off today with Vince McMahon as it's no secret that the boss can give up on a superstar on a moment's notice, and two superstars reportedly learned that lesson the hard way this week. Ringside News is reporting that both Tucker and Otis have fallen out of favor with the boss, as Otis is not a priority anymore, which explains his absence from last week's SmackDown. Though Tucker was on Raw, his decisive loss to Ricochet was a big sign of things to come, and a member of WWE's creative team questioned how people are surprised by this. Despite Otis being one of McMahon's favorites of 2020, that's clearly changed, and Tucker's heel turn was a spur-of-the-moment decision to shock fans with no follow-up planned. Though there were plans being strongly considered for the two to be on opposite teams for Survivor Series, it looks like that won't be happening now, and from now on, both men may struggle to get any airtime, never mind a pay-per-view appearance. We are entering the Thunderdome next, as the WWE will have to leave the Amway Center next month, and now we know what the company has planned next. WrestleVotes is reporting that WWE are planning to use the Thunderdome concept until at least February, so fans should get used to the virtual fan experience. With that said, their report also noted that the WWE has something planned for the 2021 Royal Rumble, and are insistent on having live fans, even if it's just for one night. Given the report saying that the Thunderdome will be a thing until at least February, that means WWE could still host WrestleMania 37 in front of live fans, though like everything in 2020, those plans could change. Speaking of pay-per-views, this year's Survivor Series won't see many title matches due to the brand warfare dynamic, but the company is already looking past November 22nd. According to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, The New Day will soon be defending their titles against the Hurt Business, given their loss to the group on this week's Raw. Of course, championships could change hands between now and Survivor Series, as Jinder Mahal was meant to face Brock Lesnar at the 2017 show before he lost the WWE Championship to AJ Styles. This week's edition of SmackDown will see SmackDown Women's Champion Sasha Banks vs. Bayley, and time will tell who faces Raw's Women's Champion Asuka at Survivor Series, and who the Empress's opponent will be after the November event. AEW news next as Taz has settled into a commentary role with the company, and like many AEW stars, isn't afraid to poke fun at WWE. During AEW Dark this week, Frankie Kazarian took on Ryzen, and Taz quipped that Ryzen's first name should be Terra, a reference to Terra Ryzen, Triple H's WCW character. Taz added that the name would never get over, and Excalibur loved the joke and burst out laughing on commentary, later adding that Ryzen is a terror. Name or no name, Ryzen came up short to Kazarian, who won with a DDT, and we doubt anyone will be calling him a terror anytime soon. Back to WWE, Riddle news next, as Matt Riddle moved to Raw and had a name change recently, and whilst he is reportedly going to be a serious character soon, that doesn't mean he's liked backstage. After the draft's first night concluded, Seth Rollins said he has no interest in facing Riddle, with stories coming out that paint a vivid picture of real-life heat between the two. While speaking to Sports Kita, Riddle opened up about the heat he's had and continues to have with WWE, saying that he spoke to Vince McMahon three weeks ago before the Rollins story broke. He said, We mentioned the heat I have with certain people, but at the end of the day, he signs the checks, he makes it happen for me, and they're in control, not the talent. If employer's happy and I can make them money and make them a profit and I'm worth my weight and I'm pulling my weight, I don't see a problem. To answer your question, yes, some people I have heat with, but most of it's just high school caddy, he said this, people who just can't take a joke or a work. 
Whilst McMahon does sign Riddle's paychecks, it's no secret that wrestling can be a business driven by backstage politics. And with many people Riddle has annoyed being with WWE longer than he has, it's certainly not the best idea to upset your co-workers too much. Two people who are proving to be wildly popular with both fans and higher-ups backstage are Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss, and as the weeks go by, the duo is getting even more twisted. According to PW Insider, WWE considered Wyatt a babyface on SmackDown, and given Bliss's role as a sidekick slash partner in crime, there's been comparisons made between the two and the Joker and Harley Quinn. It's interesting that this comparison has been made, given that Bliss has rocked a Harley look in the past, whilst The Fiend's horrific mask has reminded DC Comics fans of a storyline where the Joker wore his own face as a demented mask. Bliss's presence usually means The Fiend is around somewhere, but for now, the real question is how much WWE is going to allow this union to grow before changing direction once again. Now, Thunder Rosa recently dropped the NWA Women's Championship, and despite Billy Corgan confirming she's still under an NWA contract into 2021, there's been speculation that she's heading to WWE or AEW. While speaking to Busted Open Radio recently, Rosa said she has no ideas about where the WWE rumors have come from, and added, I'm signed with NWA and have another year with them. When it's my time, it's going to be my time. My value is going to be bigger because I'm going to be a better wrestler, cut better promos, my body is going to be chiseled, I'm going to have a better MMA record. I'm going to be like, this is all I have to offer. What do you have to offer me? That's what I want when I go to a bigger company. I want them to want me. Because of all the projects I have on the side, it has to be a place where I'm able to continue working on what I'm working on. If I'm able to do it with NWA, then NWA. If I'm able to do it with AEW, probably. Now knowing what WWE is doing with things we have on the side, it's going to be very difficult for me to work on my personal projects. Sometimes, those personal projects are the things that bring you the most joy in life. I don't want that. Clearly, Thunder Rosa is addressing the WWE's recent rule that's caused superstars to lose their Twitch and Cameo accounts, and given all her projects out of the ring, it's not hard to see why this would put her off. In the end, Thunder Rosa has a very difficult decision to make when her NWA contract ends in 2021, but it sounds like fans shouldn't expect to see her in a WWE ring. More Kylie Ray news next, as she's recently revealed she's no longer a professional wrestler, and although a thank you Kylie hashtag spread across the internet wrestling community, some fans are part of why she's leaving. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer commented on how happy she was when she got a huge reaction at Double or Nothing. But after she lost weight and got in great shape, fans harassed her for doing that. And could this and other hurtful comments be one of the reasons that caused her to quit wrestling? Meltzer also brought up how Cody Rhodes comparing Kylie Ray to Bailey, saying she's the real one probably didn't help her confidence either, and hopefully the 28-year-old will enjoy her break from wrestling before deciding what's next for her career. Back to WWE, and on Monday night, the WWE on Fox Twitter account posted a very random tweet. When the account randomly shared a photo of Brock Lesnar beating Kofi Kingston for the WWE title on the Fox premiere of SmackDown, many fans questioned why they did this, and Kofi even added, Why y'all keep bringing up old shit? Kofi's WWE title reign was a long time coming for fans, who were unsurprisingly unhappy to see it end in mere seconds to Lesnar, and we too were questioning why the WWE on Fox account would bring it up 13 months after it happened. We are looking ahead to Survivor Series as Raw's men's team has one spot left, and Braun Strowman knows who he wants. Speaking on Raw Talk, Strowman, who's in the team alongside Sheamus, Keith Lee, and AJ Styles, said he wants Drew McIntyre to take the fifth and final spot. Having the former WWE Champion would be a huge deal for Raw, and with current champion Randy Orton already set for a match at Survivor Series, McIntyre joining Team Raw isn't out of the question. Back to AEW as the company signed two new promising young stars just the other day, and now they also have a new team name. During a discussion with PW Insider, Tony Khan discussed the signing of Anthony Bowens and Max Caster, and added that they'll be known as the acclaimed going forward. It's certainly quite the name for two fresh faces in AEW, and we'll have to wait and see just how acclaimed Bowens and Cater are in the coming months. Khan also spoke about the company's medical team, which is receiving an update following recent injuries on the show. In the wake of Alex Reynolds being knocked out in the ring for about a minute before anyone noticed, 
Khan said they've now implemented a two-way feature so refs can talk to backstage if there are injuries, and that they're also bringing Chris Nowinski on board. A former WWE superstar, Nowinski is now using his Harvard education as an expert on CTE, and having someone who's done as much research as he has will no doubt be of great use going forward. Back to WWE, and recently the company filed for a very unique trademark that has got fans scratching their heads. On October 29th, the company filed a trademark for Chigona Bomb, and we have no idea how they'll use that intellectual property. It could be for a new superstar, or a finishing move, or even a tag team. And we'll keep our ears peeled for any Chigona Bomb references in the near future. Over to Raw, as Retribution attacked Tucker this week in what seemed like a random assault, but now the group have commented on it. Appearing on Raw Talk, Mustafa Ali explained their actions, saying that as they're called Retribution, they gave a dose of Retribution to Tucker after he betrayed Otis at Hell in a Cell, and asked why they're not questioning Tucker about his actions. When our truth questioned if the stable is taking matters into their own hands, Ali said the group will act as judge, jury, and executioner, and time will tell what other doses of Retribution the group will dish out next time against other superstars. Now, Netflix will be producing one of their most expensive documentary series ever all about Vince McMahon, and he isn't the only one to get the doc treatment. While speaking to Chris Van Vliet, Lillian Garcia confirmed that a documentary about Stone Cold Steve Austin is in the works and will be produced by the same team behind Michael Jordan's Last Dance. Garcia also revealed that she will be working on the production, and given their real-life friendship, it's not hard to see why. She added, it's crazy because when I got the message, I was literally just watching the Last Dance documentary. I said, Jake, I'm literally watching your documentary right now. This is amazing. Not only is this documentary about Stone Cold in the works, but Lillian confirmed that it'll be released next year, and fans can look forward to seeing a new take on the Hall of Famer in 2021. And we're ending today with Jim Ross, and though he may be a WWE Hall of Famer, that hasn't stopped him taking shots at his former employer. Most notably, JR has said that Vince McMahon decided to put NXT on TV at the same time as AEW Dynamite to see if AEW's show would be crippled, and on his Grilling JR podcast, added, How's that working? How's that brilliant, evil strategy? Going head-to-head -head is good in a boardroom, it's good in a rah-rah meeting, but at the end of the day, you bring more people to a television set that are wrestling fans at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on Wednesday night because you've got two brands now that the audience can sample. JR added that this is just the latest, quote, unscrupulous, unethical situation that's been justified with the line, it's just business, and noted how this plan has backfired on WWE, given that Dynamite usually wins the ratings war. If McMahon wanted to steal Dynamite's viewers, then he's certainly made a huge error in judgment, and whilst the boss may not want to admit defeat and move the gold brand, he may soon have no choice.